I'm Salome from the Center of Interkey Studies at the University of Fiji. I'm a grandmother. I'm uh, also a retired uh, school teacher. And uh, I've been here at the University of Fiji for the past uh, almost 10 years now. I started here in 2009, and I'm still on the program. Itoke is a Fijian word for indigenous, indigenous people. Um, hello everyone, my name is uh, Dr. Nandi Prasad. I've been uh, with the University of Fiji for the past four years. This is my fourth year. I started in 2016. And uh, I'm from the second largest island of Fiji, that's one of so My mom is from Boa and my dad is from Nandong, so it's actually mm. from one island, I mean one side of the island to the other. So, and uh, my parents were actually school teachers, so most of our childhood we spent in uh, in uh, rural villages, and most of these were uh, actually we went to some of the schools where we, me and my brother, we were the only uh, Indian uh, kids in a school of all indigenous uh, uh, Fijians. You know, so uh, connection-wise, we we have a lot of understanding. Uh, towards uh, the indigenous community. So I think that helped a lot in terms of our bringing up. In our center, we concentrate mostly on three aspects of uh, indigenous uh, studies. The first one is language. Second, we touch on literature. And the third part is our culture. Those are the three main components of what we do it, uh, every year with the students. We have um, students here in the western part, in Saweni campus, and we also have students in the central division where we, well, the students also take the same units. The units are offered in semester-wise, and whatever is offered here is also offered in Suva. We have about uh, more than 400 students in, I think, in both campuses. And uh, our first year group has really, the numbers really increased greatly. From what I know, in 2010, we used to have less than 20. Now, in Saweni or Lotoka, I have uh, 107, 107, and in Suva, we have uh, 56 first years. So we find that the, the programs that we are offering here is attracting more parents to send their children here, because we find that it's mostly the parents who encourage their children to come and learn what they cannot uh, teach or nurture at home. So we are, we are very thankful that we are part of that upbringing for the indigenous people in Fiji. I'm from the Department of Management and uh, we have uh, uh, several programs ranging from uh, diploma in management to degree in management, postgraduate, masters and then the PhD. And uh, in terms of uh, the number of students we have about I would say about in total about 250 to 300 students. And uh, one important thing to note is, uh, is after their program of uh, BA in Itoke management was introduced, and that had a big impact on our numbers too. So our numbers increased uh, since that program was introduced. We've been only concentrating on uh Itauke or Indigenous Studies and Language, English. And um, we found that the interest of uh, most of uh, Itauke people today is based on business because of tourism, since they are landowners and they own the lovely beaches and all this. They're more interested in uh, running business for the people or for the, their land. 
And uh, when we started this off, I know I was one of uh, those who started questioning the students. What do you feel if we, if the university asks you to take uh, ETO case studies or indigenous studies and management, how do you look at that? And they say, we'll all come for management because we've had enough of English in schools. We want to take us uh, an area that will help us in life. So, you know, I, I really am thankful that the program had started because it's a life learning skill for our, for our young Itoke people because that's something we lack in our culture. We, don't, we are not business oriented. We are more to giving and giving and participating rather than accumulating something for the future of the family or the children. So I'm very thankful that with management, when we enroll them, is it English? Oh, no, 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 not English. I want to be a management and it's okay. My PhD actually was in um, based on sustainable uh, marketing of the tourism industry. So um, that is why I think in a lot of pre programs, we, we do not have a bridge between uh, two different disciplines. <clears throat> Um, like, for example, like uh, uh, Madam mentioned, the, the Itoke way of living is far much different from how the management theories work. So I think it's a very good bridge in terms of uh, if we have resources for, for the indigenous community to, to learn how to manage these resources, not only for now, but how the, that resource could help them for a long period of time. So, <clears throat> and uh, uh, similar to that program, we have the uh, uh, tourism studies that we are working on that is uh, supposed to start early next year. So here, again, we'll see the issue between the environment and management. Mm -hmm. So for, for, for a management student, if, if somebody graduates in a degree in management and goes back to manage uh, something in the tourism industry. Uh, see, his point of view is only about uh, efficiently using and maximizing wealth. So, for example, um, as a manager, a student or a person will not be concerned that much about the environment. So, uh, what we have done actually with our tourism studies program, we have incorporated uh, uh, a few courses from the biology, uh, from the science department. One of them is uh, biodiversity and conservation. So what we think is that um, when a manager knows more about how his decisions might affect the environment, he will be able to make a better decision. So uh, for example, there's a step with uh, the environment, the UN environmental program which states about uh, the, the damage that cruise ships do. So they say that uh, when a cruise ship anchors into a harbor, it damages uh, half the size of a football pitch, and another half when it is drawn up. And for this area to regain to its original state, it takes about 50 years. Mm -hmm. Now for me as a manager, if I'm only, uh, I have a degree in management, and if I have the chance of uh, getting more cruise ships into into a particular hub, I would I would I would say yes, because it will bring in more revenue. But when I know things like this, for example, how cruise ships might affect the environment around the hub, you know, I wouldn't make that decision. I'd probably think about having just a few ships uh, that the environment could sustain the damage of. So while we are getting the revenue. At the same time, we are also thinking about the environment. So I think that is uh, how management as a department wants to fit in into most of the other, in terms of uh, Itoki studies and the indigenous studies and as well as tourism, to bridge that gap. I really like this, uh, this um idea of having the Itoke or indigenous, uh, these present generations to take uh, management and business studies. 
because we, one thing that indigenous people value and treasure is the, is the land and how we maintain and sustain the land for our own living. Uh, I'd like to mention in particular the fruit trees that we have. Today, a lot of young Itoki people will go for apples and pears, whereas so with us and those in the village, we'll go back to planting our own uh, trees that bear lovely fruits like mangoes and so many, there's so many. And with management, I find that I know that the students will be encouraged to utilize the land and plant what is near to our hearts, mm -hmm. and that is maintaining what our elders, you know, used to live on. They didn't need money to live, but today, because of money, a lot of people, you know, it, it has brought in a lot of evils, social evils, where they've neglected how we, how we should be living, utilizing the land, the sea, the environment, as one of our means of uh, uh, food and uh, I, I now begin to see that when we go into that we don't manage our own life where we live our God given land and the sea and the environment we a lot of people are dying early there's so many things associated to that we have lifestyle diseases coming up because of the food that we go for now are mostly imported so when this management course came up, I said, well, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. This is a gift from you, you know. Our people now open their eyes, especially the educated ones, and they will surely go back to their land. They go back to their village, to their people, and talk to them in encouragement. No, we're not having this. Let's do it this way. And I find that this is summer. It's about time this thing has come back into the lives of indigenous people, where now the parents, most parents I've talked to are very happy. They say, you know, now it's worth sending our children for, to the university because we know they will return to the land and help us bring the land back to its normal state. So that's my comment on this. Uh, there's uh, actually a research that was done in, I believe in Tonga or Samoa, um, which uh, stated about uh, um, how the indigenous business owners and how the uh, Chinese business owners follow the accounting principles and management principles. And um, obviously the outcome was that, uh, that uh, those who follow the management and the accounting principles are more successful in terms of making more profit. And the outcome was that most of the Chinese business owners were more successful. Now, I think that is very one way of looking at, uh, uh, in terms of perspective, because uh, you see, for the Chinese person, whatever money he has made, uh, well, he's better off in that sense, but in terms of the indigenous uh, business owner, he could be more satisfied than the than the Chinese business owner. Why? Because probably their values is about sharing, about empathy, and probably instead of making more money, he has uh, helped different people in terms of giving credits or in other ways in terms of giving donations and stuff. So I, I don't really think money is always the right judgment to success, you know? Um, you know in this case, the indigenous business owners could be more satisfied than uh, than the Chinese business owners. With the, especially with us in the center, we, we can sort of see and envisage the loss of uh, erosion maybe, uh, which is happening now, of what we hold close to our hearts, especially the behavior. Yes, and, uh, we fear the loss of and the of respect and this interrelationship you know, between the family members. We we believe in communal living. We don't believe in in nuclear families. 
So we, we, from the indigenous perspective, is that we have all, all have only one life. And so to enjoy the life, we enjoy our relatives, share, care, and we believe to, we are very conscious of uh, uh, the values, the religion, you know, that uh, the more we give, the more we will get. And uh, so I give to my relatives. I know my relatives, when I'm sick, the house will be full. And it gives me complete uh, satisfaction or peace of mind that uh, people care, not care for each other. And that, that's our thing, what we, we are now looking at, the university plus the Ministry of Education, to bring uh, culture more strongly to the younger generation, from the six-year-old wrapped up to the university level. And I believe that that will solve that fear of loss that we may completely and totally not lose that. Well, for food, um, I don't think uh, the fear of eating more exported food than our own, because we now, maybe because of management, people are now fully aware that if I want to eat fish, I'll go out and catch my fish, rather than taking money into the market and buy. And uh, I find that, uh, the fear of the loss of our culture had been in our minds for the past few years. But uh, I can say today, we know we'll, you know we'll manage to have everything back in the, in the way our elders, our forefathers had lived. Togetherness, unity, and love is the one that binds is the, you know, the cord that binds people together. Okay. If I don't, if I see him coming and I, I'm eating, even though it's the last piece of chicken, I'll call out, my kana, come and have something with me. And if he does come, I will give that. It's, it's a belief that one day I will want, be in want and this young boy will help me. So that's a kind of uh, culture. We call it a mental, you know, kind of thinking that we have. That if I, I show my love and concern for you one day before I go down in the grave, mm -hmm. you know, it is a reciprocal. Mm -hmm. So that's what I say. That was the that's the fear, and the other one is the language. Because of media, because of the TV, our younger generation, they love to show off the English. And, uh, but to us, it's a sign of disrespect, you know, to be speaking in English when we have a communal gathering and people will pass comments. What is, you know, arrogant, arrogant little one speaking in English when you're having a function? So it's that kind of thinking that I, I know we have to try and manage the loss of our language. I don't think we will we'll come to that. We'll never. Yeah, actually, uh, I agree with her sentiments. I remember uh, I was in class five and six, so my parents used to teach on one side of the river, and we had to uh, cross a swinging bridge to go to the school on the other side and we actually had to cross a village to go to our school and uh, you know when me and my brother we used to come back like we would uh, we would have about 10 to 15 like houses in the villages that we will cross to come to the bridge and you know at any point in time if they are having tea so they would call us over to have tea if they are having you know they are lunch they'd call us over for for lunch you know so in terms of the value system i think uh, the indigenous community is very strong like she's mentioned about communism eh? and uh, and i think that's very important and i think the role of management there is not actually to manage the values because for personally for me we respect how 
how they yeah, how they operate in terms of their value system but uh, in terms of management we could probably contribute in terms of resources like how they could mm -hmm. probably uh, manage these resources in a better way mm -hmm. so 